I don't normally start my videos with warnings, but I really think it's important for this one. Mercury salts in general are very toxic, and I think it goes without saying that this preparation is quite dangerous. This procedure requires the handling of highly concentrated solutions of mercury, where a few milliliters of the solution can be enough to kill someone. On top of this, we're working with highly soluble mercury salts, so if they get onto your skin, they can pretty easily pass through it. In general, mercury salts are something that you really don't want to play around with, and I strongly urge you to not recreate what you see here. Anyway, with that warning in place, we can move on to the introduction. Mercuric chloride, or mercury 2 chloride, is an extremely toxic, colorless, and odorless salt of mercury. Historically, it was used as a biological preservative, as a photographic intensifier, and even as a medicine to treat syphilis. Over the years though, less toxic alternatives have been developed, so these uses were slowly phased out. Nowadays, it's primarily used as a catalyst in the production of PVC plastic, and as a chemical reagent. I'm going to use the mercuric chloride that I made in this video to produce something called aluminum isopropoxide. This aluminum isopropoxide will then in turn be used to make something called 1-octan-3-ol, which is a chemical that attracts biting insects. For the people who watch my other videos, you might know that I originally planned to make the 1-octan-3-ol using a acrolein. If you watched my video on acrolein though, you'll see that it actually polymerized before I could use it, and instead of making it again, I decided I would try a different method. So for this new method, I need aluminum isopropoxide, and to get that, I need mercuric chloride, and this is why I'm making it. Other than making the aluminum isopropoxide though, I don't have any real plans for the mercuric chloride. If you guys have any suggestions or cool ideas on how I could use the mercuric chloride, I'd love to hear it in the comments. To make mercuric chloride, we need three main things, elemental mercury, nitric acid, and hydrochloric acid. The general procedure for this video is to first make mercury 2 nitrate by reacting the metallic mercury with the concentrated nitric acid. Using heat, we decompose the mercury 2 nitrate into mercury 2 oxide, which we then react with the hydrochloric acid to get our final mercuric chloride. I got the procedure for this preparation from the Science Madness forums, and I'll provide a link to it in the description. To start things off, I added 75 milliliters of concentrated nitric acid to a 1 liter boiling flask. Directly into the nitric acid, I then poured in 50.2 grams of elemental mercury. The initial reaction between the mercury and the nitric acid is pretty slow, but as the reaction progresses, it will speed up. It's extremely important to only carry out this type of reaction in a well-ventilated area because it does produce quite a bit of nitrogen dioxide gas. The reaction that we're carrying out is shown on the left, where the mercury reacts with concentrated nitric acid to form mercury 2 nitrate. The reason why we start by reacting mercury with nitric acid is because nitric acid is a very good way to convert metals to their respective salts. Nitric acid is both an oxidizer and an acid, and because of this it reacts with a lot of metals that other acids won't. You can see here that a strong reaction occurred when the nitric acid and the mercury were mixed, but if we were to add mercury to let's say hydrochloric acid, not much would happen. The reaction is pretty quick, and once all the mercury has reacted and we get our mercury 2 nitrate, we just have to do a little bit of chemistry to convert it to our desired mercury 2 chloride. After several minutes, all of the mercury should have reacted, and we let things stand for the solution to cool down. It should also be noted that from this point on, we have to be extremely careful, because we're going to be working with highly water-soluble mercury salts. With that warning in place, we move on, and we pour our mercury nitrate solution into a beaker. The 1 liter flask is then washed a couple times with water to try to get out as much of the mercury nitrate as possible. The beaker is submerged in a near boiling water bath, and we try to evaporate off the water. I say try because this hot water bath really didn't work very well, and I eventually ended up abandoning it. What I did instead was turn on the hot plate, and place the beaker something like an inch or an inch and a half away. What we want here is a nice steady rate of evaporation, but we also want to limit the heat, and we want to avoid getting things too hot. 
Mercury 2 nitrate has an anhydrous form and a hydrated form, and the melting point of the hydrated form is 79 degrees Celsius. Even when all of the water is gone, we'll still have a liquid because we have to slowly decompose our hydrated mercury nitrate into its anhydrous form. The anhydrous form of mercury 2 nitrate doesn't melt at such a low temperature, so it crystallizes out as a solid as soon as it forms. This final drying step of our mercury 2 nitrate is extremely slow, so it's important to have patience. As we continue to dry things, we actually got something that looked a little bit like wet scrambled eggs. When it started to look like we had a relatively dry powder, the heat was turned up to decompose the mercury 2 nitrate into mercury 2 oxide. The mercury 2 nitrate decomposes at relatively low temperatures, but to get a decent rate, I cranked the temperature up pretty high. However, it's very important to not let it get hotter than 400 C, otherwise our mercury oxide will decompose back into mercury metal. So, as I said before, we're decomposing our mercury 2 nitrate into mercury 2 oxide, but we also form a little bit of oxygen gas, as well as nitrogen dioxide. As the mercury 2 nitrate continues to decompose, we start to see some red mercury 2 oxide forming. Eventually, we stop seeing nitrogen dioxide gas, which indicated that the reaction is more or less over. Just to be sure, I continued to heat things for a while, and in the end, I was left with a pale red powder. There were still some white chunks left over, but no matter how much I heated it, it didn't seem to break down. Things were allowed to cool down a little bit, and then I added 60 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid reacts immediately with the colored mercuric oxide to form colorless mercuric chloride. I added the hydrochloric acid in small portions with stirring in between, but there wasn't a huge reason for doing this, and it probably could have just been dumped in all at once. After all of the hydrochloric acid is added, I mix things as well as I can using a stir rod, but it's expected that not everything will dissolve. The solution actually takes on a very slight yellow color due to the presence of a little bit of nitrogen dioxide gas. Just like before, the beaker is then placed above a hot plate and we heat things up to get rid of the water. Since we effectively added at most 60 milliliters of water, we're actually above the saturation point of mercuric chloride. As I continued to heat things up and stir, mercuric chloride precipitated out of solution. What we want to do now is continue heating things until all of the water is gone, and we're effectively left with a nice dry powder. As we get very close to getting rid of the last bit of water, some nitrogen dioxide gas starts to come off. Right now, it looks like things have a slight yellow color, and this is due to the nitrogen dioxide, but once we get rid of all of the gas, we should be left with a nice white salt. Eventually, pretty much all of the water is gone, and we're left with some nice white mercuric chloride. I leave the mercuric chloride on heat for a little bit to fully dry it up, and then I transferred it to a bottle. The beaker still contains some mercury salt, but I decided it wasn't worth my time to try to recover it. The final yield of mercuric chloride came out to be 67.51 grams, which represents a percent yield of a little over 99%. I was very glad to get such a high yield, because when you work with mercury, you really want as little waste as possible. As I mentioned earlier, I used the mercuric chloride to make aluminum isopropoxide. The synthesis of the aluminum isopropoxide has already been filmed, and that should be posted eventually. I mentioned in the intro that I don't really have any other uses for the mercuric chloride besides making the aluminum isopropoxide, so if you have any ideas, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, as usual, I'd like to extend a big thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon, and especially those who donate $5 or more. Anyone who donates and supports me on Patreon gets to see my videos 24 hours before I release it to YouTube, and if you donate $5 or more, you get your name at the end of the video like you see here. In the next few months though, I want to work on my Patreon page a lot, and I want to get more rewards going, and maybe even get some higher tier ones, and I want to also offer some Patreon exclusive content.